with power. He went about doing all manner of good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts 10, 38. Jesus healed and cast out devils by the Holy Ghost. Who are we to think we can do either or any of what we read in these Gospels? Without the Holy Ghost, without a fresh encounter of the Holy Ghost. Without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. John 15 and 5, Lord. Hey, without you, we don't want to do nothing. We don't want to preach without you. We don't want to worship without you. We don't want to have church without your Holy Ghost. Who cares if the service goes long anymore? Who cares if somebody lays in the floor for three hours? Who cares, Lord, if I gotta pray an hour and a half until somebody receives the Holy Ghost? Who cares if I gotta pray two hours to cast the devil out? Who did I shine that out of Messiah? Hey, on the rushing mighty wind. the body I want more of you God should I find down in my soul that I can't that I can't control I want more of you God I want more of you God should I find down in my soul that I can't contain that I can't that'll help me this morning. I'll lay hands on you.
Don't remind, didn't happen just when my prophet laid hands and prophesied. It happened to you on the first verse of how I heard thou art. That's when I started. Matter of fact, this demon that's trying to steal your passion is trying to even drown your desire. God says today, daughter, that enemy leaves. That enemy is overcame now in my presence. Come here, sister. I sent some tired people. Judges 8 4, Gideon said. We were weary, we were faint, but yet pursued. There won't be that tiredness after today. He's your strength. Your labor in me is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 15. in my presence is going you and you'll have rest. You are going to rest and even this afternoon you're going to have a rest. Come on you. And God says you're going to sleep. You're about to sleep. You're going to be able to sleep because he gets his beloved sleep. Psalms 127 to Because I hear the Lord saying you've not had a restful sleep in a while. But God says I give you rest. You won't have to take a thing to sleep. You just got the gospel. For the righteous cry, the Lord hears it. And delivers them out of all their trouble. Psalms 34, 17. He's hurt you.
just one moment in the presence of the Holy Ghost.
in the room, Psalms 147 3. Psalms 34 and 18 said, I'm nigh to those of me of a broken heart. God said, I've used this season of brokenness to bring myself closer to you. And God said, This day I pour on you an oath from heaven that you have never known. And I'll begin to use you in the coming days like I have never used you in the past days. For today I prophesy a new ministry, even a fresh one, says the Lord. Hebrews 2 and 4 said his gifts are conditional that's according to his will. In Luke 16 and 28, the Bible talks about a rich man who lifted up his eyes in hell. Amen. He was in torment. The Bible clearly said in Luke 16 and 28, it was a place. Somebody say hell is a place. It's a literal place. Especially during this time of the year, I refer to hell as an eternal horror house with no exits. The monsters there are real. And it's Halloween. Come on, somebody. Year round. Fires there are real, the torments there are real. There's no escape from it, there's no way out. After you die, there's no way out. John 3 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The heaven of John 3 16 is everlasting life, but the hell of John 3 16 is, is in this you should not perish. Before Jesus ever said to Nicodemus anything about being welcomed to heaven and receiving everlasting life, he warned about a place in eternity called hell where you could perish if you don't believe on this crucified Christ and him being raised from the dead. Somebody say, what a horror story. What a place of horror. David said in Psalms 119 verse 55 or 155, he said, horror grips me because of the wicked that forsake your law. I be, believe David had a glimpse of the horrors of hell. And the evil screams 365 days in the, the gnashing of teeth and the weather. Hell ain't just some cursed word, it's a cursed place. And somebody shout, it's hell without Jesus. This crucified Christ who took your sins in his body on the tree that you being dead on the sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed, first Peter 2 24. And believe that God literally and physically, bodily, through the power of the Holy Ghost, raised him from the dead. Friend, that's eternally where you'll spend the rest of your days in eternity. Going to church ain't good enough. repent of your sins and believe on Him. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. Amen. What a ghost story. <laughs> you believe God raised Him from the dead. You must believe it. You must believe this ghost story. God raised His Son Jesus through the power of the Holy Ghost from the dead. Somebody shout, When you believe on this, and confess you sin and believe on him as Savior, you will be saved. That's the only way you're going to miss hell. Good deeds ain't good enough. The church attendance and activities you're involved in will not be good enough on that day when you stand before me. It's the only way to escape eternities. Horror house that has no access. Hell. It's through the blood of Jesus. 
Come on, still minister the power of God by His Spirit to those that are infirmed and sick. I need a miracle in my body. I've needed a miracle in my body for years now. Stuff surgery ain't even fixed all the way. Hallelujah. But it seems like the longer mine goes on, the more I lay hands on folks, they get theirs. So, Lord, instead of my miracle, give me my ministry. Hallelujah. But you don't, somebody will get miracles in a moment, but I gotta pause and invite somebody to receive the grace. So let every head be bowed for just a moment. If you're in here on the sound of my voice, you're watching on video, listening on audio, if you're watching by the way of the internet somewhere in the future. You say, Preacher, I've come to realize that I'm unprepared for eternity. I, I know I don't follow this Jesus I occasionally call upon, especially when I need help. I'm still living in sin. I still just do pretty much whatever I want to, and then occasionally on Sunday I'll come and Word, but as far as really repenting and surrendering, I'm not getting that. Romans 8 14, the Bible says, Many are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Here's one of the ways you know you're, you, you know you're His, you're led by the Spirit. The only way you can become a child of God is follow the Holy Spirit. See, it's Him that's making your heart feel like it's beating faster right now. It's Him that makes you feel like you're the only one in the room sticking out like a sore thumb, like everybody knows it's you that needs to go to the altar when everybody don't. He's dealing with your conscience right now. It's Him leading you. He's leading you to Christ. Friend, there is no salvation in Jesus if you don't take heed to the Holy Ghost. He says, wherefore today, if you'll hear the voice of the Holy Ghost, Hebrews 3, 7, the Holy Ghost, when it comes to getting saved, Holy Ghost always says today. Holy Ghost always says now. Holy Ghost never says tomorrow. When it comes to getting right with God, He never, remember that, Holy Ghost never says next week or next Sunday. Holy Ghost always says now. Now is the time. Today's the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians 6 and 10. And he bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Verse 15 of Romans 8. If you don't have that blessed assurance, if you don't have that very witness that that scripture involves and speaks of, you don't have that in you that you're God, that you belong to God, that you really gave your life to Him. Friend, that's a sign that it's you He's talking to while I'm speaking right now. He's using my mind. He's using the words that come out of my mouth. And He's calling you to Himself. Don't put him off. Put him on. Don't turn him away. Take your mask off. Let him do you like Saul and bring you down a road to Damascus. Let him demask you. Let him demask you. Let him take the mask off you. Don't, don't play the hypocrite no more. Don't play the part no more. Don't just pretend anymore. For if a man thinks himself to be something when he's not, he deceives him on self. Galatians 6.3 I'm going to count to three when I do if you have any question if there is any doubt whatsoever whether or not you're ready for eternity if this was your last day on this people planet called earth if this was the last service you ever attended and the only opportunity you had left before you left this earth would you waste it like you have others you sit there and say, I know I'm ready, but get something down deep in somebody else's heart says, my God, if this was my last one, if this was my only chance of getting right with God, if I walk out of here today, I know if He came, I'd be left, or if I died today, I'd lift up my eyes like that rich man in hell. Friend, you can't wait till you die and then do something. You got to do something while breath's in your lungs. I'm going to count to three, and if you know Holy Ghost is calling you, you know it's you he's begging, that he's drawing to Jesus. Without any reservations, when I hit that number three, get up from where you are and come to him while you can. And he said, I'll in no wise turn you away if you'll come to me. John 6, 37. One, two, three.
three. There's the countdown to eternity. What if this is the last chance you'll ever have to get right with God? I promise you, I've preached just like this, and it was for some. I pray it ain't for nobody. But hey, reality tells me even today could be my last day. That's why I preach every time I preach like a dying man to dying people. I preach like it's my last time. That's why I don't waste time. That's why I refuse to be controlled by a clock on the wall or a watch on the wrist. Thank you, Lord. The Lord told me also earlier, and while we're still continuing to minister, if Jesus is not Lord of your life, you know. You better come. You better come while this service continues. Because if the Holy Ghost never graces your heart again and beckons and calls you again, you won't get right with God just because you choose to. You don't choose Him. He chooses you, John 15, 16. So when He chooses you, you better choose Him back. Or you can miss it forever. Because I promise you, this ain't the first time he's called you. I heard somebody say the other day, making reference to attending a bar. Hearing the bartender say, the last call. And they said, oh, where have we heard that at? And they were making reference to a bar. And I just spoke up and said, the church. This literally could be somebody's last call. I preach funerals for people remembering when their last call was. And I had to be the one that gave it. Now, here three days later, I was preaching at their funeral. I'm telling you, it happens. But while we're waiting on some others, some already came. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for some. If you see somebody come down here during this hour of service right now, and I'm calling people to come give their life to the Lord. Have, if you're saying God and Jesus is in you, go lay hands on them. Pray with you. Praise God. God won't hear me and pray for us. See two of you there's been praying for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's, there's a woman in here. There's a lady in here. God says, there's more than one of you. You've been having some female complications, some problems that concern you. And there's more than one lady in here. Dear sister of the Lord, my sister God says, come stand before his altar and you will be healed this very day in the name of Jesus. But you must come and stand before my altar, says the Lord. Come on, obey God. We're going to buy something. Come on, he made your body, he can fix it. There's another one. She's not the only one. We're going to buy something to be cruel. I thank you, Holy Ghost, for healing your daughter. That's it, obey God. And I said more than one. I didn't say two. I just said more than one. I knew there was more than one. Holy Ghost told me something. He ain't no lie. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for healing your daughters. Thank you for healing my sisters, Lord. Come on, saints, put your hands this way. God's doing miracles. Lord, you said today. You said today.
it aches sometimes. See, like a belt being took off, just like a belt being released. He did about God in the pressure. He did about Sunday. Lord, I command this to be gone in the name of Jesus. Heal today. Jeremiah 30 and 17, for I will restore him unto you and heal you of your wounds. Say the Lord. Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Also, the Lord, I hear the Lord saying, several people with urinary symptoms, urinary complications, symptoms. I don't know the details of it. The Lord says to do with urinary symptoms that are not normal. Male and female, the Holy Ghost said, come stand before my altar. You will perfect that which concerns us. Psalms 138 8. And I thank you, God, it's perfected now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. He will see the change. Hallelujah. For God's glory. Somebody say amen. Sometimes you come to my house and you just feel me, and, but then you have to go back to your house and the enemy's doing all kind of stuff. But God says, daughter, today you're gonna go home and you're gonna feel me in your house like you feel me in this house. And God says, let that be a sign to you that I'm gonna turn around that that's been going on at your house. I'm gonna make things happen in your home. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna restore, I'm gonna move. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody clap. 